Hope you're trying to have a productive day. In this video, we will go through another past paper question. This one will be question number five from the 2015 physics paper two. Let's get started. Now, if you are watching this video and you want practice on physics past paper questions, what you could do is that you could read through this question and attempt it yourself. And then afterwards, you can watch the video to see if your answers are correct and see if you can learn along the way like that. I'm going to scroll through the question. This is question five. So it starts here. You can read that, read this. Let me scroll down. This is that. And then the question ends here. So you can pause the video at the different points and attempt the question yourself if you want to. Let's get into answering these questions. Long-sightedness is an eye defect that affects many persons. Explain using suitable optical sketches how long-sightedness occurs and how it can be corrected. Right then, to explain what long-sightedness is, long-sightedness is a condition where you can see distant objects clearly, but objects that are close to you, you can't see them. That's what long-sightedness basically is. How does it occur? Why does it occur? And how can it be corrected? Now, before we get into long-sightedness, let's just introduce a concept of a lens. A lens is an optical instrument that basically refracts light. And when the light is refracted, light coming from different points will eventually converge after they pass through the lens. Let me just represent that diagrammatically. You have the lens like this, light passes like that. So this is a ray. When the ray passes through the lens, it will bend like this and it goes there. And then you have another ray coming here and then it passes through the lens and it bends like that. Not a perfect diagram, but it's just to introduce you to the concept of lenses. So basically lenses will cause light to focus and where they cause the light to focus, depends on the type of lens and the strength of the lens. But let's just say this part right here that I'm circling now, that is where the light focuses. That's where different beams converge and they, they focus here. And that means that this lens is indeed a converging lens, or you can call it a convex lens, right? Now your eyes contain a kind of lens, right? And that lens in the eye does the fine focusing when you are looking at something. So let's just draw an eye like that. Let's say this is an eyeball and then inside the eyeball is a converging lens. Now, what happens in the normal eye for the eye to see something is that the rays coming from an object will pass through the lens like this and then the lens will focus them. So it will bend the rays. So a ray coming from the top, bend something like this. And then a ray coming from the bottom for a distant object will bend something like that. Again, not perfect, but you get the idea. So this part here, this part here where the rays come together, the rays are focused. Now, if this part here lands on the retina, then you will see the image normally, right? So the retina receives the luminous energy and it basically translates that energy into electrical impulses, which then travel to the brain. And then that's how you're able to see, right? Now what happens in farsightedness is that let's say you have an object here, a point object here. The object is going to give off light rays like this. So it's gonna give off an a light ray that goes there and then another light ray that comes here. All right, so the rays will pass through the lens and they meet up. They meet up about here where they converge. Now, because they meet up here where they converge, they don't necessarily focus on the retina. In the previous diagram, the light rays converged on the retina, but in farsightedness, the light rays converge after they pass the retina. So by the time it gets to the retina, the light rays are not focused enough and the image does not look clear. That's what happens with farsightedness. Why does that happen? It happens because the converging lens does not have sufficient curvature to actually converge the light rays in time. Or 
the eyeball may be too short. Those two things can cause the light rays to converge after they hit the retina, not on the retina, right? Now, in order to correct farsightedness, what happens is that a lens is put before the eyeball. Like this, that is placed in front of the eye. And then this lens will cause the light to converge more. And when the light converges more, it goes through this lens, goes through that lens, and eventually converges on the retina. So let me draw that. So as you can see in this diagram, the rays converge on the retina, whereas in this diagram, the rays converge after they pass the retina. So what happens is that this converging lens adds to the converging power and it causes the light rays to converge more than if the lens was not there, right? So because this lens is too weak, we need to add a converging lens to help it converge light more. And then when that happens, the rays end up hitting are converging on the retina. So explain using suitable optical sketches how long sightedness occurs. It occurs when the eyeball is too short or when the lens is not strong enough to focus light. And how can it be corrected? It can be corrected by adding a converging lens or a convex lens, and that will cause the rays to focus on the retina instead of after hitting the retina in the case of the normal farsighted eye. B. Use a ray diagram to show how focused images are formed in a magnifying glass. So let us construct a ray diagram. Right then, this is our ray diagram. So the center line here represents the lens, and this lens is going to be a converging lens. Right? Now what is this graduation what is that graduation? And it, ha it occurs on both sides. Well, this horizontal line, we can call it the principal axis. The vertical line is the lens. The intersection of the lines, we can call it the optical center of the lens. This distance here is going to be a specific distance. What is that distance? Well, the distance that is represented here is the focal length of the lens. The focal length is the distance between where the rays converge and the lens. So before we drew the lens like this, and we said that rays would pass through and then converge at a point. So the distance between here and where the rays focus, we call that distance the focal length represented by the letter f so this distance here we can call it f and f is the focal length f occurs on both sides of the lens because the object can be here and the light rays go in this direction or they go in that direction but the object can also be over here in which case the light rays go in that direction. So either side of the lens has a focal length. So the distance between here and here is supposed to be the same distance between here and here, right? And then this distance between here and here, between this second graduation and the optical center, that distance is basically 2F because it's two times the distance of F. And 2F also occurs on this part of the lens as well. Right then. Now we have to remember something. And if you didn't remember this, you could experiment in the test, but it would probably take a lot of time while doing an exam. So I would recommend that you just learn the different scenarios. Now, this question wants us to show how an image is formed by a magnifying glass. The way that images are formed and the type of image that is formed depends on where the object is with reference to the lens. If the object is close to the lens, you get an image. If the object is at the focal length, 
you get a different image. If the object is between the two times the focal length and the focal length, you get another image. And if the object is at the two F, you get another image. If the object is at more than you get another image. That's how converging lenses work. You get different images based on the distance of the object from the lens. Now for a magnifying glass, I happen to know that in order to get the effect of the magnifying glass, the object must be a distance less than F from the lens. Now let's say the object is on the left side over here. Since it's less than F, it would be anywhere between here. It just has to be less than F. So let us say that it, the object is about here. I'm going to draw a line to represent the object. Let's say this line represents the object. Now we're going to look at the top of the object or the point up here. The top of the object is going to give off light rays, right? Now, when constructing ray diagrams, there are different rules you have to remember with regards to what happens to rays as they pass through the lens. When a ray is parallel to the principal axis, meaning that the ray is like this, when it's parallel like that, once it passes through the lens, it will go through the focus. Let me show you what I mean. So let's draw a ray from the top of the object here. It's parallel like that. Now it's at the lens. What does it do when it passes the lens? It goes through the focus on the other side of the lens. So it goes there, right through the focus as you can see, like that. Now another rule, if the ray goes through the optical center, which is here in the middle, it goes straight through undeviated. In other words, it goes like this, like that. And those are two rules that you can use for making your ray diagrams, right? Now the question wants us to show how an image is formed in a magnifying glass. The image will be formed when the rays appear to converge. So if the ray goes like that, and another one goes like that, here where they converge, that's where you see the image. Now let's go back to our diagram. We can see that there is no convergence that really happens uh, over here. The rays are never gonna meet. They're never gonna converge here because they're going in like opposite directions. So there's no image formed on this side of the lens. But if we go back to the left side of the lens, the side of the lens that has the object, then we can estimate or we can continue drawing lines until we get a convergence. So if I drew a line like say this, I drew a line all the way up here, that is the line from this ray. Now let's say this ray also goes back up to a similar distance away, like this. You can see that eventually these two rays will meet each other, they'll converge. So if we look at the ray diagram now, we can see that indeed the rays converge. It's just that they don't converge on the right side. They converge on the same side as the object. So they converge about here. That's where they converge. So we will now draw an image of this object. An image is just going to be a line that starts here and goes down like that. And this would be the image formed if the object is placed at a distance less than F, right? Now we can see something from this diagram. The image is a lot larger than the object. The object is only this high, but the image is this, this tall. So the image is larger. So we get a situation where the image is on the same side as the object and the image is larger. In other words, it's magnified. This type of scenario is what occurs when you look through a magnifying glass. So that's how you would use a ray diagram to show how an image is formed in a magnifying glass. At this point, you can probably take a break if you want to and then come back when you 
are finished. Now moving on to part C. An object is placed 12 centimeters from a converging lens of focal length 18 centimeters. Determine the position of the image and its distance from the lens, whether the image is virtual or real, and then determine the magnification of the image, hence its orientation. Now we're dealing with a lens and it's a converging lens. It's also assumed that it is a thin lens. For thin lenses, there is an equation that relates focal length, object distance, and image distance. That formula is one over F is equal to one over U plus one over V. F is the focal length. U is the object distance and V is the image distance. So when you have the focal length and the object distance, you can find the image distance. Or when one of these is unknown and you have the other two, you can solve for the unknown. Now the question told us that the focal length of the converging lens was 0 0.18 meters. So we can just write that in. So one divided by 0 0.18 is equal to, it said that the object was placed 0 0.12 meters away from the lens. And then it wants us to find the image distance. How far away is the image from the lens? So all we have to do is just solve for V. What we can do is divide one by 0.18 and we'll get roughly 5.56 divide one by 0 0.12 and we'll get 8.33 and then we still have one over V. Now we can subtract 8.33 from this side to get just one over V on this side. And then we subtract 8.33 from this side. Now after subtracting 8.33 from 5.56, we get an answer of approximately 2.77 is equal to one over V. Now we want to find V. Let's multiply this side by V and then multiply this side by V. So we get negative 2.77 V is equal to one. Now let us divide this side by negative 2.77 and divide this side by negative 2.77. And then we get V is equal to one divided by negative 2.77. When we plug that into our calculator, we get approximately negative 0 0.36 and the unit would be meters. The distance the image is from the lens is 0 0.36 meters. The position of the image. Now, here we got an answer of negative 0 0.36. When you get a negative answer for V, it means that V is virtual. It means that it is on the same side of the lens as the object, which means that it is 0 0.36 meters away from the lens, but it is also on the same side as the object. So that is the position and the distance. Part two, whether the image is virtual or real. Well, we just said that because the image is on the same side as the object, it is indeed virtual. So we already answered that part of the question. Now the question wants us to find the magnification of the image and hence its orientation. So magnification of an image is related to object distance or image distance or even the focal length. Let us consider the object distance and the image distance in this scenario. 
Magnification. Magnification would be equal to negative of the image distance divided by the object distance. So to work that out, we calculated the image distance to be negative 0.36, which means it would be negative of negative 0.36. And the image distance was given to us as 0 0.36. 0.12. Now when we have negative of a negative, it gives us a positive. So it's basically 0.36 divided by 0.12. And that gives us a magnification of times 3. So the magnification of the image is times 3. Its orientation is going to be upright. So because the magnification is times 3, it's going to be 3 times larger than the object. And since it's on the same side as the object, it's going to be upright. And that brings us to the end of the question. So if you were able to do the diagrams and the calculations, then you would have acquired 50 marks and you would have been one step closer to acing that exam. So as always, thank you all for watching and I hope you've learned something.